Merriam-Webster.com defines the jump shot as a shot in basketball made by jumping into the air and releasing the ball with one or both hands at the peak of the jump. This shot accounts for about 70% of all shots taken during a game and is considered to be one of the most important techniques in all of basketball. Overall, being skilled in the jump shot enables players to release the ball from relatively unfavorable distances from the hoop and still be able to put points up on the board. The jump shot consists of three general phases that must be identified before any further biomechanical analysis can be done. These phases include the preparation phase, the execution phase, and the follow-through phase. My subject's name is Allison Hughes. She's 21 years old. She is 5 feet and 11 inches, weighs 130 pounds, and has a previous injury history of chronic shoulder subluxation and she plays basketball for Nova Southeastern University. A couple of skill related tests that I had Allison perform for this biomechanical analysis was the vertical jump and the shoulder mobility test from the FMS movement screen. Her score on the vertical jump was a 23 inch and that was uh, from a standing position and she scored bilateral threes on their shoulder mobility tests and was also negative for the impingement clearing test on the FMS movement screen. So this is Allison performing her jump shot right after practice. Um, the first clip was a full speed clip and this is a clip that's slowed down to 1 8 speed. Swish. So just to start off with the analysis, um, Allison's preparation phase was pretty textbook. She had a shoulder with stance to start and she had her pivot foot forward which helped her increase her stability. She did have a bit of a valgus moment at her knee which helped increase the torque and she kept her body in a balanced position so there are no interventions for this phase. Also I wrote the equation for force up on the screen. That just means that Allison needs at least 588.6 newtons of force to propel herself off of the ground. Now, moving on to the ball elevation phase. Main points for this phase, you want your shooting hand to initiate initial velocity and impulse. And then you want your shoulders to flex along with your elbows and wrists and the summation of the ground reaction forces from the preparation phase are going to initiate extension at the ankle, knee, and hip joints. Um, overall, my interventions for this phase were just for Allison to align her shoulder properly and have it directly under the ball. Now, she did mention that she has her chronic shoulder instability or subluxation, so that could be an issue and that could be what's affecting her at this phase. Moving on to the stability phase or the flight phase of the jump shot. Um, so further hip, knee, and ankle extension produces a vertical velocity of both her body and the ball. Um, the wrist flexors are further loaded with elastic energy to create that counter movement effect. The center of mass should also be in her hips as she approaches triple extension and stability becomes a primary concern because she's no longer on the ground, therefore she loses her base of support during flight. The only intervention that I have for her in this phase is that she increases the acceleration in which she extends her joints so that she can create more force coming off of the floor because we do know that her vertical is 23 inches and as you can see on the screen, she only gets up to 0 0.09 meters, which converts to um, not 23 inches. So 23 inches actually converts to 0.584 meters. So that gives you some perspective. Now in the release phase, the main thing that we're going to be looking at is the angle of release, which is simply the angle that the ball leaves Allison's hands. 
Um, this phase is really important because the aspects of the release angle, release velocity, and the height of release all can affect the ball's trajectory for the rest of the shot. And the ball should be released from the highest point of the jump, which seems to be Allison's main problem. Uh, as you can see, one of the interventions that I put in this phase is that she should delay her release of the ball until she reaches her maximum height. This picture shows Allison at her maximum height, and you can see that the ball has already been released a few seconds before she got to this height, which is why the ball is further away from her hands than it should be. So waiting a little bit until she gets to that maximum height will potentially decrease the angle in which she has to release the ball. As you can see, it's 62.7 degrees. If she jumps a little bit higher, she can throw the ball at a little bit less of a degree. And last but not least, we have the inertial phase, otherwise known as the follow-through phase. Now, this phase is characterized by sustained wrist flexion, and the elbow should also be in full extension while the shooting hand finishes parallel to the floor and the fingers pointed towards the basket. Um, if you decrease the wrist motion during this phase, it may result in lower ball release velocity, but as you can see, Allison is finishing with her shooting hand parallel to the floor, her wrist is sustained in wrist flexion, and her sh shoulder and elbow are in full extension, so there are no interventions needed.